calling me Andri, Andri Haber. I'm also known as a practicing anarchist and uh, I'm known as Toxic Uncup. More importantly, I am uh, I'm a U Ukrainian who survived uh, Chernobyl explosion, survived the crash of the Soviet Union, uh, was on uh, Maidan 2004, Maidan 2014, uh, evacuated uh, one third of his company in 2014 from uh, Russian invasion has uh, my house nearly bombed in 2022. And lately, uh, uh, practically speaking, I was uh, denied entering my country and passport renewal by uh, Ukrainian government. Uh, so you can guess I love the state. <laughs> That's why I'm Practicing anarchist. Let's start with definitions. Practicing, per Merian Webster, is person who is actively engaged in specified career or a way of life. An anarchist, person who rebels against authority, established order, or ruling power. Let's do it up in it from the very beginning. In 17th century, philosopher Locke introduced a very bizarre concept that people uh, can actually live by valuing freedom, life, and property more than any rules from above or God's will. Uh, U.S. founding fathers, fathers changed this to the pursuit of uh, freedom, life, and happiness, uh, but who am um, to criticize founding fathers? Second important point, we live in a state of anarchy most of the time. Nobody f of uh, nobody forced us to come here and sit, whatever I am talking about. Uh, actual uh, um, enforcement, state enforcement, is uh, happening very rarely. Yet, even in our world, conflicts are happening and they will happen. Therefore, in, uh, while practicing anarchy, we have to learn to resolve them. And uh, there are just two ways, two principal ways to resolve any conflict. The peaceful resolutions, uh, when uh, conflicted parties are actually seeking a solution. They want to minimize loss to their property, even to the disputed property. And military one, when somebody values uh, this property more than their life or freedom. Peaceful resolution doesn't preclude the use of kinetic means. Military uh, resolution, military way doesn't require. It's the, the difference in values. So, what are the means of peaceful resolution of any conflict? If you and me have a conflict, we can go to an arbitrage and uh, get an advice how to resolve it. If we are not satisfied with uh, this advice, we can go to a court and uh, submit a full collateral for the property that we um, have a conflict about. If not, we can start kinetic. And uh, in this case, kinetic uh, action stops exactly at the point when uh, at least one of us uh, revalues the value of the property under the conflict. Means of Military resolutions, sorry, none, because it's war. And the only two ways out of war are peace, when one of sides uh, returns to rational uh, estimate of profit and losses, or genocide, when one of the sides stops being an organized entity. What's the goal of the state? The goal, the, uh, this is the means, and the goal of the state is taxation, and taxation is theft. And as many of you know, uh, state officials' office uh, behave as religiously motivated people. They believe that by using magic called elections and I have an order, they have a claim on your property. Therefore, by this framework, they are not rational. This means the state kills 
and there is no way out of this within the rules of the state. And uh, this ends only when office will kill all productive people, like we are here in the room. State is a parasite. Example, Soviet Union, Roche Khmer, Cambodia, Northern Korea. If I'm a practicing anarchist, how would I deal with such people? Rational strategies are, evade. If I fail to evade the conflict, I would try to de-escalate. Because actual conflict, kinetic conflict, is extremely expensive, and I have very limited resources, while state has a lot of them. Unfortunately, since uh, state offices are religiously motivated and their, uh, <laughs> their natural selections work uh, to promote the most uh, um, unrational and tyrannic people, uh, most of them will um, believe that my attempts to de-escalate are the sign of weakness. Therefore, the third step, I would show that I'm ready for violence. And if the violent conflict is unescapable, I will use right away all the force to destroy my opponent. Because otherwise, I will be in the prolonged conflict, and this will cost me a lot. A uh, uh, useful metaphor uh, for uh, dealing with such uh, crowds of people is to consider them a uh, force of nature. You don't argue with a hurricane. You or go out of his way or build a shelter. So, state people uh, behave like a destructive religious cult. Stop financing them. When you pay your taxes, you just give them more power. To do this, Maximize your internal production. Do whatever, whatever you can do by yourself, within your family, within your community. Maximize agoric trade. And remember, the violent conflict is inevitable because uh, office make themselves less rich while you grow your capital. They will come for you. To await, build your mobility strategically. Prepare for physical mobility. I mean not just cars, planes, whatever. Prepare IDs, visas, residence permits, passports, whatever you can. Choose your lifestyle location carefully, so you will have at least two ways to leave your home. Build your business online, so it would be extremely mobile. Use, minimize use of state currencies, or if you can, don't use them at all. And uh, store your wealth in crypto. Diversify your income uh, sources and resist KYC. Participate in economic insurgence. Let me uh, give one definition. Capital is a good, economic good, that is uh, intended uh, to produce other good, not for immediate consumption. When my kid plays on this phone, this is just a basic economic good. When I'm doing business on my phone, this is capital. So, save your capital outside of state reach. Grow your capital. Invest your capital to lower the future cost of, your con uh, of the inevitable conflict with the state office. Grow your safety capital, the one that you will spend when the conflict will start. Use your knowledge of technology as a leverage. Remember, uh, this conflict will be conducted over several domains, physical, when they will uh, try to uh, put a physical force on you. Financial, when they will uh, limit use of your funds. Economical, when they will regulate your uh, business out of business. And information, when they will uh, bombard you with uh, 
spam AdWords and uh, convince uh, your neighbors that you are a evil person because you are boiling the oceans. Starve uh, for technological self-resistance, self-reliance. Grow your technology capital as a part of your safety capital, so you will be able to machine anything you will need. Build your knowledge, analyze it. Uh, build your production capabilities, uh, whatever, whenever you can. Make them small, make them mobile, uh, make them minimally attended, so you won't be uh, obliged to run it day on day, day to day. Make this production uh, uh, capabilities full tolerant. Standardize the equipment. Most important question. This is all fancy bells and whistles, but who pays for the party? You may know that there are two ways to coordinate groups of people. Hard coordination, which is power and order, and soft coordination by prices. The whole economy, uh, our productive, productive capacity is built by soft coordination. Use this power. Discover the trading of risks, insurances, prices. Use, develop and use prediction markets. This is not developed yet as a software. Package them as a structured instrument, financial instruments, and sell them not just to yourself, but to your neighbors, uh, like an insurance. But the conflict is inevitable. In the 60s, uh, there was a US colonel uh, from Air Forces who tried to formalize why um, uh, US fighter pilots uh, frequently win combats with uh, Soviet pilots. He created order loop, observe, orient, decide, act. Utilize this framework to uh, plan your behavior, your uh, preparation for the ine inevitable conflict. Plan before shit hits the fan. If you are forced to defend your household, in every domain, once again, physical, financial, informational, Observe your situational uh, awareness. Orient in your operational environments. Plan layered engagement. How you will retreat, because you can't sustain the prolonged conflict. And take action. Remember that everything that can fail, will fail. Prepare and drill in peacetime while you have time. This will be a uh, in critically important part of your safety capital. And of course, automate as much as possible. If you are caught on the run, on the go, I have just two rules. Sorry, you are screwed. <laughs> rule number two, see rule number one. Basic process is the same. Stay low profile. If you have a contact with uh, your opponents, police, army, whatever, uh, break it as soon as possible. If you can't break the contact, decide, fight, yield, and be extremely flexible. Whoever runs the loop faster, this person wins. And are there any lawyers here? Okay, um, because I'm frequently uh, asked the, this question. Uh, the, rights that are granted you by laws that are um, by constitution they are not rights there are privileges and whoever gives you those privileges he can take them away from you real rights are not given are not granted they are taken and you own them and the real law the common law system is just a network of agreements peer-to-peer -peer or cooperative agreements between people 
actual people who suffer the cost of conflict to minimize the uh, potential cost of the future conflict. So here is my call to action. Grow your safety and technology capital now. Remember that as in every capital market, liquidity is king. If you have uh, right now an armed mob attacking you and you have one million dollars, it won't buy you a handgun. But yesterday, you would spend less than 1% of your capital to have it. And prepare for the worst when shit will hit the fan. Because if you value your life more than your property and your freedom more than your life, then you are practical, practicing anarchist. And you, if you are hearing this, you are the resistance. Thank you.